Okay, so here we have an equation x squared minus 5x plus 6. And um, normally, you know, we've taught you how to look into the calculator and find where the table where y equals 0. Um, last couple of days, we talked about how we can factor this equation, and that's what I did here. And we get x minus 3, x minus 2. And when we solve that, x minus 3 equals 0, so x equals 3, and x equals 2. And those are two solutions. But sometimes we're going to run across problems which we can't find. No matter what we do, we go into the delta table and we change it from point, uh, we change it from 1 to point 0.1 to point 0.01 to point 0.001, and still there is no 0. Well, this is when we come across the quadratic formula. And so we're going to use the exact same problem again, and we're going to use this to solve using the quadratic formula. So, the quadratic formula allows me to take a problem like x squared minus 5x plus 6 and solve it without using the calculator, without factoring, by just taking advantage of the fact that y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, that these particular values always have a relationship such that when we place them into this formula they will always generate the solutions and I used to teach how, how we could generate this equation and if you're interested in, in how this equation is, is created I'd be more than happy to show you but um, just for now let's just say that this formula will always provide us with the solutions to any quadratic. And so we're going to use a, a very simple one, the one that we just solved for, to prove that it works, and then we'll go on and do a couple more complicated ones. So first of all, very critical, it has to be in standard form before we do this. So just like all the other um, times we solve for a quadratic, it has to be in standard form. So here we have negative b. So my b is negative 5, so negative negative 5 means that I have positive 5 plus or minus the square root of b squared. b is negative 5. And that number here, b squared, is always going to be a positive number. Whether or not this is positive or negative, when we square it, we're going to end up with a positive. Minus 4. a, in this case, is a 1. c. c, in this case, is a 6. And until you get comfortable with this, I would highly recommend that you do just exactly what I'm doing here. Walking my way through, taking a look at the equation. Um, don't worry, you don't have to memorize the equation. I'm going to provide the equation for you, or the formula. So now we have 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 4 times 1 times 6 is 24, all divided by 2 times and my a is 1. And I'm going to move over here. So we have 5 plus or minus 25 minus 24 is 1. Square root of 20 of uh, square root of 1 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Now we have two equations here really, right? We have 5 plus 1 divided by 2 and we have 5 minus 1 divided by 2. And it's very important that you do both of those because we are looking for all the solutions. And if you do only do the positive or you only do the negative, then you've only found half the answers. So 5 plus 1 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 5 minus 1 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Not magic. If I was to, to take the time to show you how the formula was created, you'd realize that it's not a magical equation, um, but it just works. Okay? Um, and so if you look back in your notes, you'll notice that the solutions from factoring was also 3 and 2. Well, let's do a couple more so we can feel comfortable with this. Okay, so here we have negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And it is the entire thing. So negative b is negative 3 plus or minus b squared 9 minus 4a in this case is 2c 
see is negative 7. Be careful here. We've got some negatives going on. 2 times 2a is 4. I'm going to change the color here a little bit so we can keep track of what we're doing. Negative 3 plus or minus 9 minus 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times negative 7 is 56. But we have a negative times a negative, so this is a positive. Positive 56. Okay, so be very careful there. Two negatives multiplying against each other gives me a positive. And then we have a 3. I mean a, pos a 4. And so now we have negative 3 plus or minus the square root of looks like 65 over 4. And I know that you're going to not like this, but guess what? That is a perfectly acceptable answer. And the reason is, is there is no square root of 65. And so we're just going to leave it just like that. Now, if we wanted to get an absolute best guess, could we put in our calculators negative 3 plus the square root of 65 divided by 4? And negative 3 minus the square root of 65? Divided by 4? Absolutely. In fact, we'll most probably do a little practice tomorrow with the table start with that. But that is considered a good answer. Let's do another one. Let's give myself some room here. Okay. So, we are looking at this time negative x squared plus 2x minus 8. So negative 2 plus or minus b squared 4 minus 4a. a here is negative 1. c here is negative 8 divided by 2 times negative 1. Negative 2, plus or minus 4. Okay, again, we got negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 8 is negative 32. We have 4 minus 32 divided by negative 2. When I get to this far, and I'm going to show you how you can save yourself a little time here in a minute, but if you were to get this far, we know that th this is going to give me 4 minus 32 is negative 28. Is there a square root of a negative number? Absolutely not. So at this point we know that we have no real solutions. Okay? So you can see at each step here I've gone in and I've put my values in, just plug in the numbers dependent upon whether I'm looking at a B, an A, or a C. Be very careful with my negatives, but I think you can see three negatives gives me a negative, two negatives gives me a positive, all positives and just this negative would obviously give me a negative. I want you to go now and try these two equations, and I will tell you that you need to make sure that you put this in standard form before you start solving. Okay, pause, and I will uh, put the answers up in a second. Okay, how did you do? Well, hopefully you did okay. Now, a couple of cautions. Do not, do not, do not do this when you, get to your f when you get to this point, because the 2 is dividing the 2, and it's also dividing everything inside the square root sign. Do not, do not, do not do this. Again, the 2 is dividing the negative 6 but it's also dividing the square root of 84. So that is not correct. Okay, now, a couple of these equations we worked on where we really didn't have to finish, did we? And what happens is, is this b squared minus 4ac is called the discriminant. And basically what it tells us is, is if this value in here is 
negative, then by definition we have no solutions. Okay? If this value in here is zero, well then the only thing left is the negative b over 2a. And I hope you recognize that as the axis of symmetry. So if this goes away and the only thing we have left is this, when the axis of symmetry is our solution, we know that we only have one solution. And then finally, if my b squared minus 4ac is a positive number, then we know that we're going to end up with a plus and a minus, so we will always end up with two solutions. So if they ask you to use the discriminant to determine how many solutions, all you're going to do is take a look at your b squared minus 4ac. If this is negative, we know that there is no way that we can find a real solution. I should really put that in there. No real solutions. If this discriminant turns out to be zero, we're left with the axis of symmetry equation, which means that we're going to end up with one solution. And if the b squared minus 4ac is a positive number, doesn't matter whether or not we can find the square root of it, just the fact that it is a positive square root, then we know that we'll have two solutions. I hope that that has been a good video for you. Um, if you are a little confused, go back and watch a couple of the examples. I know that you don't like it when it's left in the radical form in the square root symbol, um, but that's perfectly acceptable. And we'll have plenty of time to practice um, on uh, the next lesson. So until then, good night, and I will see you tomorrow.